Hey everybody, this is Joe. I'm here in Houston. I'm in zone 9B. It used to be 9A, but they have updated their uh, charts these days. So now I'm in 9B and I am going to show you a bit of my garden here in the middle of April. And of course, Mrs. Doubtfire has come to be in the video already. One of the prettiest things happening in my garden is this rose. This is Excellence von Schubert, and it is one of my favorites. So many flowers and so many buds still to come. It's next to, I think, this spring's favorite thing for me, mostly because it was a surprise. Someone asked me, when did I sow this Amidara? Um, this is the only one that I have going. I sowed this seed direct sow almost 13 or 14 months ago. It, it came up, I put it under a little uh, cloche so I wouldn't st step on it. And then things got jungly and it got completely covered over. It was just like this tall under a chicken wire cloche and it basically got no, no sun. And uh, I discovered it after everything froze this year. And it still had its little tag, so I knew what it was. And then this spring, kabam. Now I've got other Amy coming up that I have, you know, direct sewn. Sorry. It can't be a video on my, uh, on my YouTube channel without a helicopter flying overhead. Uh, the Ami that uh, is the white, I think it's called Green Mist, and that I have sown um, blooms the year I the year I put it in. Online, Google tells me two different things. It tells me that Dara is a biennial, which would make sense. That's what this is acted like. But it also tells me it's an annual. So it, it acted like a biennial in my garden. I was very surprised it made it through the heat and the drought um, this past summer. I think it's because it was almost in total darkness. I've got um, the Salvia Amanti coming up. It's finally blooming. Look at that color. How beautiful. Really lovely. This is a carrot. Now, if you've watched uh, previous videos, you know that in the fall, I just buy carrots at the grocery store. I buy like an organic carrot, I buy different kinds, different colors, and I literally, October, November, just stick them in the ground because I want them to bloom. And so you get these amazing white flowers and, uh, and they get pretty big. Um, because I did not get these in soon enough, they're actually a lot smaller this year. Uh, they haven't had quite as much time in the ground. It is also, because it's, in the carrot, because it's a carrot, and a lot of the carrot family, maybe all of the carrot family, is in uh, the Eastern Black Swallowtail Butterflies list of host plants. They will eat this, and they, last year they really liked the flowers. And then I've got more carrots here, which you can see how small they are. And then I've got a little transplanted parsley over there, which is another butterfly host, and it's coming up. And here is my uh, pretty parasols cone flower, looking so pretty. And I've got a couple of cosmos then I grew from seed. These are supposed to be like four feet tall and they're getting ready to bloom, but they're only like one foot tall. So I don't have any answers on that one. And then I had a lot of salvia, uh, sorry, verbena bonariensis um, come up around the yard. And so I've transplanted some here and I'm hoping that um, they'll do well as transplants. The amazing gomfrina that was here last year, it, I didn't uh, cover it. I didn't protect it in the winter at all. You can see it's huge. And I thought it was, you know, just an annual, 
but it got to 16 degrees here and it didn't seem to bother this at all. And so it's already starting to bloom, it's so pretty. And then I think these are all um, sunflowers. I bought a couple of weird sort of interesting sunflowers, sort of pale, pale yellow and even white. They didn't do well last year, but clearly some of the seeds have popped up this year. So we'll see what those end up being. I've got this fabulous coral nymph salvia. It's kind of closed up for the day, but you can see it's the pretty color. And then this is the Duranta that I have that is coming back from the ground. It's coming back pretty slowly from the freeze, which was months ago now, but I've got it inside this just to kind of keep it from flopping around. Um, and I just thought it would be neat in there. I don't know necessarily that it needs support. And then another Verbena bonariensis right here. And then this is a coral nymph, sorry, it's a salvia. It's a salvia coccinea, but it's white. And I don't know how it ended up in my garden, but I love it. I'm so happy about it. And then, oh my goodness, you guys look at this. It's so beautiful. And um, a friend asked me, you know, like, where, where did I get this? Why is it amazing? It's self-sewed. I did not even put this here. Um, I, you can see the ones I planted, pitiful. The ones that came up on their own are just magnificent. And these flowers last so long on the plant. Um, it's, it's, I love it. And I don't know, I wish I could make all of my cone flowers look like that but I don't know the trick. That is just nature taking its course there. And then, oh my goodness, look at this beautiful um, fennel. Now I had the most fun experience this week. I got to meet one of my viewers, hello Sarah, and we swapped plants. And she was telling me that she grows beautiful bronze fennel. Uh, she's just north of Houston and I can't get it to grow, but her experience has been so good with it. I highly recommend giving it a try. It is an Eastern black swallowtail butterfly um, larval host plant. I keep looking for eggs or little but little caterpillars and I haven't found any yet um, my friend Rachel who has a fantastic YouTube channel called Gulf Coast Butterfly Gardening um, she has got wonderful little babies uh, black swallowtail butterflies their little caterpillars on her fennel and they also will grow on rue and they will also grow on parsley I got impatient and bought curly parsley last fall and planted it and I was hoping it would get big and tall and floaty and with yellow flowers like the, uh, the um, Italian parsley. It did not. Short and squatty. It's still fine. But you can see in the background that and that over there are big billowy just starting to bloom pale yellow clumps of Italian parsley and so I've learned my lesson and then here we've got the um, the fennel just getting ready to bloom and that will be just so beautiful even if I never get a butterfly on here it's such a feathery pretty plant that I'm I'm thrilled that I'm growing it here are the only super reliable cone flowers that I have. This is the powwow wild berry. And the more I grow them, the more I love them because they look good all year. They've been very, uh, very prolific and very, um, I can count on them. This is just beginning to bloom. This is Nepeta, which is cat mint. And I've got my it growing underneath and through these cloches because uh, all the neighborhood kitties like to come and lie down on it and smush it. And so I'm trying to rescue it a little bit and you can see, I just think it looks really neat all popping through the cloche and standing up a little bit. So I think that was maybe a good choice. We'll see what it looks like, you know, in the middle of the summer. Is that beautiful um, aquatic milkweed native to Texas. This has been, you can see the little sticks, it's just been chomped by uh, the monarch caterpillars, which were so fun to watch. And in a second, I'm gonna show you 
some chrysalises that I've found. And my friend Beth found one as well. And I think that looks really pretty with a pond in the middle, my little dribbly pond. And this is all this sort of pale green. That is all black and blue salvia. And it is, it's got buds on it, but it's, I figure in another week, it'll be pretty spectacular. And I'm excited about my uh, daylilies coming up. I've got back in here some Gora starting to bloom, and that is a, a native Texas plant. And then I've got another carrot back in there, but it doesn't look too terrific. But um, <laughs> I think it's probably going to block this this rose. This is Caldwell Pink. It's starting to come out. I didn't um, I didn't trim it very well in the fall or in the in early spring, and um, mostly I if you've watched before you know I broke a couple of bones and I couldn't get around and so that's deep enough and I really couldn't get there to to uh, trim it very well but I'm hoping it will bloom and then I've got things that are going to get big and block it um, and it spits out blooms the rest of the time but it, it's not gorgeous all the time big bloom and then it's kind of it's not one and done but um, <laughs> I'm not worried about it uh, these carrots will block it and that'll be fine this showstopper, nearly wild. And then I'm growing something that's new to me this year. This is called Minoan Lace. And um, if you watch uh, Linda, Linda Vodder on her YouTube channel, she grows this. It's like a little teeny tiny short version of Queen Anne's Lace. Um, it's maybe 18 inches high. It was pretty easy to grow from seed. It is a non-native. Um, but I, I really am liking it and um, I'll be interested to see how it makes it, if it makes it uh, in the heat. But it certainly has looked pretty this summer or this spring. And then these are um, Stokes asters getting ready to bloom. I'm really excited. <laughs> Those are going to be huge. And here is my first monarch chrysalis. Yay! I'm so excited. And all this pretty white back here, that is all a white variety of Salvia gregii, which I have found finicky, but I know it's a Texas native and people have, have such good luck with it. And so um, I have, I've stopped buying it and it's like this got the message that I wasn't gonna buy anymore, so it better shape up. And uh, so it's doing well this year. And here are some late comers to the, um, to the coneflower game, but they sure are looking good. And then they're sort of growing in the middle of this pretty, um, oh goodness, what's this called? This is called, oh, I can't think of it. I'll circle back. There's more over in the back and I, I'll remember what it's called in, in a minute. Goodness. Now my little uh, prairie garden, my little pocket prairie, you can see all the blue bonnets have pretty much pooped out and I am left with kind of a mess, but that's the, that's the way it goes. Um, I've still got pretty evening primrose, but now I've got all these fuzzy seed pods for the Texas blue bonnet, which are the little lupins and they're so fun. But I looked, it takes like six to eight weeks for them to, to uh, mature so that I can crisp them up and you know, they'll be crispy and I can save the seeds and, and throw the you know plants into the um, compost heap. But um, so it's gonna look ratty, which drives me crazy, but it's worth it for, to save the seeds. Here's that parsley. It's almost open. Here's one that's just starting to bloom, that pale yellow. And this is what I was hoping for over where I bought the, put the curly parsley. So now you know, if you want it to get tall, this um, Italian parsley is the way to go. Such pretty uh, Lansley Coreopsis there. And then, so I pulled out my dahlias when it was going to freeze last year they were in this pot and I pulled them out and I put them in a plastic bag and they accidentally got thrown away 
So I bought new dahlias and they are coming up. Um, and I pinch, I remembered today to pinch them back a little bit to try to get to double the, the amount of flowers. And this beautiful stuff, that is crocosmia that usually falls over. So, so far so good, it looks really pretty. And then I put in a new porter weed uh, because mine, this one died in the freeze. I, the ones in the front yard were fine, but that one died um, in the winter. Hello, missus. Are you helping today? Yeah, you're a helper. Souvenir to St. Anne, so pretty. Here's that other Amy, that's the green mist. And you can see, I just, that came up this spring and it's, it'll bloom. Uh, it's already got some little seed, seed heads forming. Um, or little bloom stalks forming. And so this seems very annual. The Dara over there seems biennial. I think I'm believing that page of, uh, of Google. This little ocean right here is Monarda called Peter's Purple. And it is a one and done. It blooms like crazy. And it is like show stopping, bring your friends to see how pretty it is. And then two or three weeks later, it's gone. And it looks terrible. But this is just getting ready. It doesn't have any, I'm not seeing any little flower heads peeking out, but, uh, and I did pinch this pretty hard um, early on. And so that's, I think, why it's so thick and lush. Souvenir de la Malmaison is going. Look how pretty. And then this purple in here is um, Salvia Mystic Spires, and I'm getting ready to add another one. And then this little business, just peeping through, is getting ready to bloom, and that is um, Agastache Tutti Frutti. And I've got some fun uh, purple hyacinth bean vine growing on here. And this is sort of a little hodgepodge. There's a carrot, there's some parsley, there's some Verbena bonariensis. This is a Cleome right here. And there's more, more uh, parsley there. So this is very, very abundant and thickly planted. Some coral nymph salvia in here. This is a Liatris. And I don't know if this is Liatris coming back from the bulbs I planted or if this has come, I threw some seeds in here. I'm kind of new to it. And so I'm hoping it will look good. And this is Clotilde Super. And oh my goodness, look at all the new growth. It looks so nice. Look at that. So I'm looking forward to a little more of that blooming. And then I'm not really showing you much over here, but I will, I'm gonna make a separate video of sort of the shady half of the garden. Look at this amazing Salvia Lucantha. It's just an ocean. It's so beautiful. I'm really thrilled about it because it, mine usually only blooms in the fall and I don't know what happened for this to get the message to bloom in the spring, but I'm really happy about it. And then of course this little knotweed that's so adorable and invasive. I'm letting it bloom because I love it. And then I, this, I'm gonna pull it out. And I'm gonna pull it out and put it in a bag and I'm gonna throw it away so that I'm not spreading those seeds because it's just, it's so invasive and it's non-native and I'm trying to be good to the planet, which means dig this up. So uh, that is, that's on my list. And then, oh, they're kind of closing this evening. All the little wine cups have looked so pretty here in the gravel and all kind of curled up around Fred, the lion. That makes me happy. So sweet. This diamond frost euphorbia, it came back from the freeze. I did not, uh, 
I did not protect that at all and you can see it's just gorgeous. So I highly recommend it when I bought it. I didn't know it was gonna be so hardy, um, but it really has been. The salvia eulogenosa starting to bloom. Look at that blue. Oh my word. Incredible. The pentas are coming out. And Amistad, salvia Amistad has finally bloomed. Look at that purple. So pretty and it's just huge and it seems to have kind of recovered from the storm that smushed the middle and then this area looks so terrible and my husband was like why does it look so terrible well things are going to get big right here so this is a cleome and um, there's a couple and there's actually a couple of little cleums just in here and they're going to get four feet tall and then this is going to triple in size there's another Cleome. That is Salvia madrensis, which is new to me. Uh, there is a wonderful um, YouTube channel uh, and uh, that I watch. She's in Houston, and it is called, I'm going to mess it up, but I will put it in the description. I think it's called Butterflies and Birds in the Backyard. I think that's what it's called. She is a fantastic, incredible gardener, and um, she grows this, and I found some. Oh, Helicopter number two. I found some at Buchanan's native plants and I thought I've got to try it. It is yellow. It's going to be a pale yellow. And so um, I'm excited about that, seeing what that is. And then this gomfrina, again, this was in this pot. I left it out. I think I put a handful of leaves on it or something when it froze, but oh my gosh, I mean, it, it's, it's huge and so beautiful and really doing well to it's filling this space. And I think it looks really fun. This little pom-pom next to this little fuzzy plant. It's just a fun little combo to have. Doc I feel like that's Dr. Seuss right there, right? This is Dr. Seuss. And this is also Dr. Seuss because it's like velvet. And so <laughs> I love that combination. Here's some carrots that are getting ready to pop open. Here is another one of my sweet little cosmos that's supposed to be five feet tall and it's like teensy but it's the color I wanted and I'm loving that color. I just wanted it to fill this whole space. That has not happened. The grasses, look how lovely. And I've got all kinds of little things that will be tall tucked in here. And one of them, let's see if I can figure out where I put it, is, um, it's right here. This is purple millet. And you can see it's just tiny and ratty, but it's got a purple stripe to it and a purple um, stem. And that should get five or six feet tall and be really cool maroon. And uh, I'm excited about that. There's our little carrot coming up. show you I'm disturbing this doubt fire this is jewels of opar I was gonna try to get you a flower that is open I'm not succeeding they were open when I started making this video but you can see they're so floaty and such a pretty little pink but you can see I mean everything about this plant is wonderful the chartreuse leaves and the pink flowers and then this sort of deep red seed head and my friend Rachel at Gulf Coast Butterfly and Gardening she is in love with chartreuse and I think this is a really good choice it's a native Texas plant 
if you guys know anything about it, I don't know how much light shade. I don't really quite know what I'm doing. This is my first, this is, I planted as a seed last year. Um, and so if you have advice on how to make it more robust, I would love that. Um, I'm waiting for it to go to seeds so I can mail Rachel some <laughs> seeds. Oh, I do want to show you before I go too far, even though it's, I'm doing the other side. This is freesia. I, these are the tiniest little bulbs and I planted them years ago and I've kind of taken, you know, dug some up and moved them. And so here and there, I'm just finding them just off in the middle of nowhere, just popping up and I, they're wonderful and they do sort of spread and naturalize. So you can see a little white back there. That is one of them. And my obsession with ivy geraniums continues. And there's so many pretty varieties. lots of milkweed seedlings going and I have that little cloche over the top so that the mama butterflies won't lay any eggs. Uh, they're not ready to be eaten up yet. I'm so excited about my little olive tree. I mean, I can't tell y'all how ratty this was for like the last 10 years. And I put it in this pot and I started pinching it back with the vision for it to be like a little topiary, even though it's crooked um, and it's I feel like it's kind of working out so keep watching we'll see four o'clocks they self seed and they're now everywhere in the garden and they grow in almost complete shade and they're beautiful they have lots of different colors I just have the pink very very easy to grow and look y'all the oak leaf hydrangea has arrived. It's in the house. Native plant takes tons of shade um, and is just amazing. Look how big this thing is. I think that's a nine foot fence. So that gives you an idea of the spread. It's wonderful. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a great week. Bye-bye.